you very much. Uh, so I'll just give you five minutes about what's going on in the house. This is, we call it the Honda Smart Home US. And the viewpoint here was about sustainability. So how do we get to a zero carbon lifestyle and do it sustainably and do it in a way that everybody can participate in the future? And the viewpoint, you know, is, oh, I can just put solar panels on the roof or I can get an electric vehicle in the garage. And that's true, but really not everybody can do that because if everybody does it, then you have troubles with the electric grid. So we started with the basic viewpoint of efficiency. First, get the electrical loads down. So the house is very efficient, laid out east-west, the glass on the south side. It's covered in such a way that in the wintertime, we get free heat. In the summertime, we don't get any light coming in directly. The walls are very thick. You'll see they're nine and a quarter inch full filled with cellulose. The windows are triple pane windows. So we get the heating and cooling loads down as low as possible. And then we heat and cool it with a very efficient uh, three mode heat pump. So it's say a geothermal or a ground source heat pump. So in the backyard we have these boreholes and in the mechanical room we have the, the heat pump. So the heat pump makes hot or cold water and circulates it through the floor and behind the second floor drywall. And you do that because pumping air around the house actually takes a lot of energy to run the fans, but moving water is really efficient. So we can heat and cool the house very efficiently, use the same heat pump to make the domestic hot water very efficiently, or like right now we're making cold water, so we're pulling heat out of the slab. We can actually take that heat and dump it directly into the hot water tank. So today I'm not going to spend any energy on making hot water because I'm making it for free when I'm, when I'm cooling the house down. The lights are all LED lights, so all very efficiency, um, very high CRI, so very high quality, and the, the scenes are, are smart, so you walk in here right now and say, oh, you know, if you're going to be cooking, we should turn the lights on, but you walk in here at 8 p.m., we'll just say, oh, you're getting a glass of wine, and, uh, you know, have relatively low lights. And then at night, we'll just have these amber footlights will kick on for safety. And also, it, it um, helps your eyes. Your eyes make a chemical called rhodopsin that helps you see at night. And amber light is doesn't bleach that out like regular white light would. But then all the regular light, like these, are, are warm. They're 2700K because um, any, any higher color temperature lights have a lot of blue light content. And at night, if your eyes receive blue light, it will suppress melatonin. And you'll have trouble sleeping. And so we try to be very friendly to the human being. We don't have any um, conditioned forced air either. So we've got these registers here. Those actually are for fresh air because it's a desert climate. It gets really cool at night. So it's 100 degrees today, but it'll be 60 tonight. So we have a whole house fan. We can pull uh, filtered air through, pressurize the house, and force all that hot air out of the house and pre-cool at night. Um, all the appliances, very low energy, and inductive cooktop because it's more um, efficient than, than, than a resisted one. So get all the house loads down, 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 and then put this big array, a nine and a half kilowatt array on the roof, and run that through an energy management machine. And the energy management machine lets us say, well, what's going on in the grid? If the grid is kind of high voltage, maybe they don't want power at the moment. If it's low voltage, maybe they do. If I need to pull energy um, to charge the car, for example, in the middle of the night, um, I can look online and I can say, hey, when's the lowest carbon footprint energy going to be on the electric grid? And I can pull that energy to charge the car. Um, like right now, the car's in the garage, the sun's out. Um, if you drove home right now and plugged in, we would just charge the car directly from solar power. Otherwise, we'd store the energy in the battery, and then we came home tonight and charge from the battery. It can respond to demand response requests from PG&E, um, so we can we can we can try to be a benevolent grid citizen. Um, and the thought being there that instead of creating disruption, we should create value to the utility. Um, so that's the so that's the first half of the house is about the energy. How do we get our carbon footprint down? How do we eliminate? You know, my personal carbon footprint might be 10 tons from my house heating and cooling, my house electrical, and my car. How do I get all of that down to zero? And then the second half of the house is about sustainability in general. If you're going to build a house or you're going to do a major remodel, you need to think about more than just energy. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, I put in a lot of insulation or I put a solar panel. I'm done. I'm sustainable. But what about the water? What about the waste? What about the indoor air quality? What about the materials themselves? And so, like this concrete, 50% of the cement in this concrete is, um, is a naturally occurring ash that you can mine in Nevada because Portland cement has a huge carbon footprint just by itself creating Portland cement. The walls, the furniture, every piece of wood in here, the flooring is all Forest Stewardship Council certified for sustainable forest management. The water, of course, all the fixtures are low flow, but the hot water tank is right on the back side of this wall. So if I turn on this faucet and I want hot water, uh, I, gotta for, I gotta waste all this cold water while I wait. So you make that run as short as possible, you waste a lot less cold water while waiting for hot water. Showers are right upstairs. 
part of the thing we can do here is, you know, we can get around a, a COP of three or four, a coefficient of performance of three or four, like a heat pump, and where a resistive, you know, an on-demand electric would have to be resistive. If you did, we don't have any uh, natural gas here because, right. you know, how would you offset the natural gas? So, if you were going to do an on-demand, it really has to be resistive, and then it's, you know, one efficiency. Right. And I can get about three. But like I said, right now I can get free hot water in the summer sometimes because I'm making cold water. So the hot water is all stacked vertically. Yeah. So the two showers are upstairs right here, and yeah. the only the only one we do actually have a, a really small on-demand one because the the powder room back there is so far away that it wouldn't make sense. You know, it's too long to run, so we put a, a small sample one there. And where's the laundry room? Uh, right upstairs. Oh, up, up there. Okay. All on the second floor. Yeah. Irrigation is by gray water, so laundry water and shower water take care of that. The, um, the, every, as you walk around, like I said, we've got civilians living here, so you know, don't rummage their underwear drawer, but you're welcome to walk around and check out. And everything in here has a story about why there was a sensibility about human health or sustainability materials. You know, that, there's, that sofa is all natural materials, no fire retardants, because brominated fire retardants are an endocrine disruptor. You know, we, we shouldn't be breathing that stuff. There, you know, there is a way to buy a sofa without it. Um, Everything in here has a reason about why we picked it. And all of that, um, all the spec sheet and everything is online on the website, and all the data we post um, every six months, we post all the data. So 200 channels of data at one minute resolution, temperatures in the walls, in the floor, the panels, the flow rates, everything.